I want to address uh, an issue uh, which occurred last week, and that is the shooting death of a Jamaican lady in the Augustown community, Susan Bogle. The circumstances behind the shooting are still under investigation. And uh, given the established protocols that now exist regarding such shootings, where there is an independent commission of investigation who takes over these matters and who has been doing a very good job in ensuring that justice is done. Nevertheless, I feel compelled to make a brief statement on the matter. And my perspective was influenced because this morning I call the son of the deceased, um, a young man who I had uh, an extensive conversation with, and very impressive young man, uh, the best of Jamaica, what we would want to see all our young men aspire to. And I was very moved, very touching story. Someone from the inner city who is doing well, who is trying to make the best of life, who has responsibility for his entire household, including persons who are um, otherwise abled, and uh, now to have the burden of the loss of his mother. I was particularly moved, and I comforted him. But the statement which moved me was that he didn't want his mother's debt to go in vain or be ignored by the state. And I found that to be very profound. Uh, and uh, Jamaica has sacrificed much. We've gone through a rough period in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s in trying to establish in law and in process that when someone's life is taken, especially if it is by the state, then there must be established protocols with a higher standard of investigation. And these protocols have been operating now since the passage of the Indicom Act. But there is still a sense where people feel they don't get social justice. And it is imperative that the government at all times reassures all citizens that the government cares. The government will ensure that nothing in these matters will be hidden, will be swept under the carpet, that, not, that the social and economic status of the victim does not determine the outcome of justice. And I had uh, what I felt to be a, a very good talk with this young man and gave him the assurance that in no way, shape, or form will there be any attempt to cover up, that we will seek to have justice done in this matter. And it is really very sad. It is still within the context of managing the pandemic disaster which we face. Our security forces are at the forefront of this. The criminals have not stopped. The shootings have not stopped. And our security forces have to be on the front line. And uh, when our citizens lose their lives in these very unfortunate circumstances, it behooves me to assure the nation that the laws that we have in place and the processes that we have established will be followed in their entirety, totally towards justice. Let me invite the Chief of Defense Staff to give a very uh, brief overview of the um, process that is in place to ensure that um, members of the force who are involved in any shootings, that those shootings are properly investigated. Chief of Defense Staff. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister. The Jamaica Defense Force, 
abides by this system of independent investigation of any incidents that members of the force are alleged to be involved in. And we are subject to investigation by both the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Independent uh, uh, Commission of Investigations. With respect to the specific um, incident that the Prime Minister mentioned earlier, we immediately informed Indicom of the incident and they got persons on site immediately. As far as I understand it, they put out information to the public the following day to indicate that they were in charge of the scene and the investigation and the information they were gathering. What has transpired so far, as they have confirmed, is that four soldiers involved were taken off frontline duties. They were interviewed by Indicom by the Friday. All the weapons involved were boxed by Indicom and are awaiting ballistics testing. And as I said, they have been taken off uh, operational duties. We are giving them all the support that uh, they need. They, I think they sent out another release uh, earlier today indicating the progress. So it's a standard practice. We actually notify Indicom within 24 hours of any um, incidents because sometimes uh, they are not aware until we tell them, but we do have a protocol established. It is important for us to assure the citizens of Jamaica that your safety is important to us. That's our primary duty to keep you safe, to uphold your human rights. And we have a very well-established program of training, education, and enforcement of uh, human rights, respect for human rights uh, by our soldiers. We are committed to ensuring that if there's any evidence of abuse of any of our citizens by our soldiers, that they will follow the due process uh, that is established internally and externally by organizations like Indicom. Let me just go to uh, Janet Silvera, who is uh, today wearing her hat as uh, the Gleaner reporter, but of course Janet is also the head of the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce. Janet? Indicom noted the absence of body cams in the police military operation in August Town. How many body cams are operational in the JCF? And how many in the JDF? And why has the government failed to expand and operationalize this crucial check on the potential for police and military excesses, especially with soldiers being heavily involved in policing? I am unable to speak to the cameras that may be um, in the possession of the police, unfortunately. Um, and um, I don't think the commissioner is available right now. For the JDF, we only have a few sample cameras that we have been testing. So last year we got some and they failed to meet the requirements. They're, they were not uh, sufficiently rugged um, to stand up to the normal activities of the troops. And we got a different set this year that are currently undergoing testing. So we do not have wide-scale um, deployment of cameras at the moment, but we're going through the process that would allow us to um, have cameras for the troops to um, use when they are deployed. The government is committed to increasing the number of body cams being worn. However, we have to social distance, thank you. <laughs> However, we, we have to bear in mind, we have to bear in mind that we have very serious budgetary constraints. But the commitment is there and we continue to increase the numbers on a yearly basis. 
teach them. Hey, yo, hello. Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.